So when it comes to making video games, ideas are thrown about all over the place. And some are just thrown out entirely, whether in the early drafting stages or perhaps even weeks prior to release. And sometimes it becomes clear that an idea just isn't working out, or maybe there just isn't enough time to get an ambitious element finished before that apparently unmovable release date. And so, video games tend to ship with a ton of extra game data for features that, for whatever reason, were cut or scrapped during production. And today we're talking about the boss battles that we never got to fight. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 hidden video game bosses you weren't supposed to see. Number 10. The Egg Jankin – Sonic Mania The Sonic games are absolutely jam-packed with secret and half-finished bosses, though perhaps the most interesting example of all occurs in Sonic Mania. Shortly after the game hit stores and reversed the series' critical fortunes overnight, fans discovered an unused Robotnik slash Eggman boss hidden within the data of the Studio Opolis Zone. Named the Egg Jankin, the boss is an egg-like mech piloted by Robotnik with two screens on it, on which the player and Robotnik get to play a game of rock, paper, scissors. Hitting the underside of the egg causes both screens to draw their hands, and if Robotnik wins, the players will suffer through a barrage of tricky attacks, while if the player wins, Robotnik will incur damage. Such is the formula until one side is KO'd. Unlike a lot of cut bosses still residing within the game's code, the Egg Jankin is actually a fully functional boss fight, and considering its conceptual cleverness, it's surprising it ended up being left on the cutting room floor. Number 9. The Giant Chicken – Silent Hill Believe it or not, the data files for Silent Hill contain seven more grotesque otherworldly creatures that didn't make it into the final cut of the game. Though six of the seven monsters seem to be pretty typical Silent Hill enemies, the seventh contains far larger and more detailed data, suggesting that it was actually intended to be a major boss fight in the game. The enemy, simply dubbed CKN in the files, resembles a horrifyingly mutated fetus chicken. And certainly fits perfectly into the skin-crawling gallery of abominations that featured in the game proper. Quite where the player would end up battling this oversized walking pile of meat is anyone's guess, as is also true of Konami's reasoning for removing it from the full retail release. It's tough to imagine that this, no matter how gross the rest of the game got, was where the publisher decided, nah, that's too much. Number 8. The Light – Cuphead It's clear that so much time, effort and artistry went into designing and executing Cuphead's gorgeous enemies that it's difficult to picture any extras being buried in the game's files. But that's absolutely the case, the very oddest of which is surely the light, who can be fought by modding Cuphead to access its debug menu. The light would have appeared as a mini-boss during the player's encounter with King Dice, and at this point actually resembled the original 2010 design for Cuphead himself, a green creature wearing a top hat. Fans have speculated that this drawing was simply used as a placeholder during development, as were images of Cuphead's co-creator, Jared Moldenhauer's head for the light's minions. The fight itself also takes place in a rudimentary, incomplete area, a black expanse with two platforms and a series of beams firing outwards from the boss's position. The name of the game is to avoid the red-coloured beams and the light's minions while attacking him until he perishes. The fight was clearly in an early stage of development that was believed to have taken place in a nightclub with a disco ball firing lasers at Cuphead. After players discovered the unfinished mini-boss, the developer's studio MDHR released a patch which removed it from the game code entirely. Boo! Number 7. Skullface Metal Gear Solid 5 – The Phantom Pain. When Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain was first released, many players complained about the conspicuous and disappointing lack of a boss battle against the antagonist Skullface. Though MGS5 generally lacked the series' signature tricksy boss fights, it was reasonable to expect a showdown with the game's human villain rather than for him to be unceremoniously killed off in a cutscene, as was the case. And indeed, players who data mined the game uncovered extremely persuasive evidence that Hideo Kojima originally intended to have the player battle Skullface as expected. The game's sound files contain samples of what resembles Skullface engaging in combat with the player, with the implication being that players were at one point given the option of either killing him or taking him back to the mother base. This is further exemplified by the fact that Skullface's custom lever action rifle, the Skull Custom, also appears in the game data as a usable weapon, and modders have even been able to import it for use in-game, though it can't actually be reloaded here. Quite what a Skullface boss battle would have entailed is anyone's guess, but knowing that it was at one stage going to happen only makes its absence that much more frustrating. For Kojima's part, he decided that a boss encounter with Skullface would have been inappropriate given the game's themes, basically stating that if he did give you this opportunity to fight Skullface, then it would have been pandering to a Hollywood expectation of a happy ending good versus evil showdown. Right. Number 6. Ash – Streets of Rage 3 Now the case of Ash in Streets of Rage 3 is a most curious one indeed, because this mini-boss actually did appear in the opening South Pier warehouse level of the Japanese version of this game, which was entitled Bare Knuckle 3, before then being taken out 
for European and American audiences. In the Japanese release, Ash would rock up with a speedboat and sick two of his goons on you before getting involved himself, and defeating him would leave him blubbering on the floor. It's never been officially confirmed why Ash was cut from overseas versions of this game, but we'd hazard a guess that such a stereotypical, offensive portrayal of a gay man would definitely cause issues. Ash does, however, remain in the game's code across all regions, and though his mini-boss coding is disabled for Europe and the US, he can still be accessed as a playable character with a cheat code. Number 5. Professor Oak – Pokemon Red and Blue An entire article could be written about all the content that was cut from the Pokemon games, though by far the most legendary of all of the unused enemies is surely Red and Blue's hidden trainer battle against Professor Oak. Fans discovered an unused fight against the inimitable prof, and considering the strength of his Pokemon, which is a Taurus, Executor, Gyarados, and Arcanine, it's basically accepted that he was originally intended to be a bonus final boss after defeating your Pokemon League rival. The fight can only be played either by glitching or hacking, and while Oak has no battle dialogue that lends further context to the fight, he can indeed be battled to completion. Why such a cool fight was removed from the game proper remains a mystery, though at least sufficiently committed players can experience some vestige of it for themselves. Number 4. The Elusive Man – Mass Effect 3 Now fans have a lot to say about Mass Effect 3's highly controversial ending, and one of the many sticking points was the lack of an outright boss battle against the Elusive Man, who was merely confronted in a dialogue-driven cutscene. But Bioware originally planned to have players take him down in a more typical boss fight, as players have discovered by digging into Mass Effect 3's databanks. The original release of the game includes unused audio from the Elusive Man, where he seems to mock the player's attempts to attack him, and there's also a clip of him roaring monstrously. This coheres perfectly with the released concept for a Reaper-fied Elusive Man originally planned for the end of the game, and writer Mark Walters reiterated to Eurogamer last year that it originally ended with a Reaper Elusive Man boss battle, not unlike the bombastic fight at the end of the second game. While we technically had a boss fight against the Elusive Man, albeit a spoken one, only a few scattered remnants remain of Bioware's original vision for this battle, before deciding that it really didn't fit the character or the story that they were telling. Number 3. Tiny Forest – Mother 3 Now granted, you could argue that Nintendo doesn't really want you to see Mother 3 at all, given that the legendary RPG still doesn't have an official release outside of Japan, despite being released all the way back there in 2006. But even so, hackers have discovered an unused enemy in the game's code by the name of Tiny Forest, which has a complete AI combat routine and so can be fought like any regular enemy. Tiny Forest was originally supposed to appear at the Mole Cricket Hole area of the game, and due to the extent of its attacks and the amount of HP it has, it was very clearly supposed to be a mini-boss in the least. Despite appearing to be a basically complete enemy though, the Tiny Forest curiously lacks an overworld sprite, and so resembles a placeholder enemy until you engage with it. As for why this mini-boss was removed, well, your guess is as good as ours. Number 2. SpongeBot Steel Pants Third Phase SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Now the final boss in SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is SpongeBot Steel Pants, a giant robot version of SpongeBob that is sicked on him by the malevolent Roboplankton. Now the boss has two phases, but fans ended up discovering a third unused phase in the game's code, where SpongeBot sprouts huge inflatable muscular arms and dons a speedo to fight Patrick. Though this phase can't be played to completion, many of SpongeBot's attacks and taunt animations are included in the game's files, suggesting that it was relatively far into development when it was given the chop. While the third phase was briefly featured in a trailer for the game on a bonus disc of Mario Kart Double Dash, it's fair to say that most players quickly forgot about that fleeting glimpse. Curiously though, these files reappeared in the more recent rehydrated remake, yet sadly the cut phase wasn't restored to the battle, as would have explained the file's reoccurring presence. And number 1. Clutch – The Binding of Isaac – Repentance Now here's an especially fascinating example of a cut boss battle that received enough attention from fans that, unlike SpongeBot Steel Pants' third phase, it was eventually added back into the game in earnest. The Binding of Isaac's third and final expansion, Repentance, was released last March, and soon enough players dug into the game's files and found an unused boss battle going by the monikers The Possessor and Clutch. Clutch's AI routines weren't entirely finished, but players could observe both phases of the battle. And so, after enough fans tweeted at developer Edmund McMillan inquiring about the boss, he decided to patch it back into the game. Lo and behold, the game's recent 1.7.8 update added Clutch as a legitimate boss, much to the fan base's delight. And of course, they immediately began wondering whether some of the game's other incomplete bosses might also get the same treatment in the near future. Here's hoping. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 hidden video game bosses you weren't supposed to see. I hope that you enjoyed that, and let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. And if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter, at RetroJWithAZero. And just to clarify, the O is a zero, not 
that it's just retro j with a zero all as one word as so many people have been putting in or if you want to see what i'm up to outside of work you can go over to live and let's dice where i do all my streaming and warhammer bat reports but before i go i just want to say one thing hope that you are treating yourself with love and respect my friend because even though today we spoke about video game bosses you weren't supposed to see i am seeing you right here my friend and i'm telling you to give yourself some love and respect because you bloody well deserve it and don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise all right go out there with love in your heart and remember you are a massive ledge as always i've been jules you have been awesome never forget that and i'll speak to you soon bye